Assalamu alaikum, hope you all are fine. Today we came up with a new video on the topic what are the shutdown activities, what is a shutdown, the hazards of the shutdown and the activities involved in it and the control measures for those hazards. Hope you have liked our first video, this is our second video, thank you very much for liking and I'll start my topic for today on shutdown. What is a shutdown? Shutdown is the maintenance of a completely made project. For example, there is a train, there is, for example, I'll give you an example of Qatar gas. If in Qatar gas is completely developed, the whole train are functioning, working. For example, they have to do some maintenance of their plant. That's what we call shutdown. There are two types of shutdowns. Number one, planned shutdown. Number two, unplanned shutdown. What is an unplanned shutdown? For example, some equipment, some process is going on and there is uh, some problem in an equipment. You have to get that change or get that result, but you cannot stop the whole process due to that small problem. So you will use the alternate vessel or alternate equipment as there is always equipment on standby in the oil and gas industry not to disturb the process. So in the meanwhile on the live area you have to maintain that, that specific path due to which the process is getting disturbed. Now that is called unplanned shutdown. Now we'll come to the planned shutdown. What is a planned shutdown? Plan shutdown is when a companies, companies are using for example same like your motor vehicle. You are using your vehicle, you are getting it oil changed. Why you are getting it? To keep that maintained, to increase the life of your vehicle. Same like that the plants are continuously working 24-7. So after a specific time, as, the, as per the durability of the equipment, there is a specific time when they have to give maintenance to the plant for the long life and to increase the durability, effectiveness of that equipment. So. We will start our shutdown activities will begin with nitrogen purging. After the plant is shut down, the, the client company will gonna do the purging of those lines and then they will cross the steam from those lines. After shutting down the plant, the client is gonna hand over that plant to the contractor company. Before they will what they will do? They will do the purging of all the lines along with they will cross the steam through that. The purging, why we are doing the purging? Because the purging we are doing with the nitrogen splash, nitrogen gas. We are going to splash nitrogen in the line for the purging. Because nitrogen is heavier than all the gases, so it will settle down with all the gases down. Then steam will be used to take out all those gases and before entering in that we have to do the ventilation of the equipment, all the vessels wherever we have to work. Now, there are three steps, three parts in which shutdown activity is divided. Number one, pre-shutdown. Number one, shutdown time, shutdown activity time. And number three, post-shutdown. Pre-shutdown, what will do? It is the preparation of the shutdown. For example, they will apply for the permit, the procedures, risk assessment, each and everything will be done in the pre-shutdown. Then the shutdown activities will start after the erection of the scaffolding. Along, they will apply the loto system and then they will hand over. The loto system, what is the loto system? Loto system, log out and tag out system in which what they are doing, they are locking down the equipment after for example a wall is closed. Anyone can come and open that one. To avoid that hazard, what they are doing, they are putting a lock out and tag out system. What that system do? Lock out, someone, the responsible person will lock that equipment with a lock and then only the one key for that will be. There should be only one key for that. And the person who have locked that, it will be with that. And the tag out, that there will be a tag as with the information giving that why the equipment is logged out, what was the purpose and who had logged it out. There will be a number for that pers person if someone wants to contact that and want to know the reason, he can contact that person. But there will be only one key for that log with the person who is doing the activity. Now, we will come back to our shutdown activities. Now, shutdown, pre-shutdown activities, they will apply for the permits, they will do the preparation, risk assessments, where are ever their jobs, location, vehicle routes, each and every planning will be done in the pre-shutdown. Steam and purging, with that the shutdown will start, then they have to do maintenance of the plant. Now, for the maintenance of the plant, what they will do for the beginning, first we will dismantle all those equipments which we have to do the shutdown, we will open those equipments to check for the problems, how much problem it is, because before we cannot assess how many, how much problem is in that equipment, maybe that equipment need a change, that cannot work for more one year, maybe that equipment can be maintained and then it can work, it can regain its efficiency. So after uh, the QC will check for the quality of that one and then they will decide what activity we have to do on this uh, equipment. Then what they will do, after removing there are many activities going on with these equipment, vessels, columns, exchangers, 
Now I will come to the activities of the shutdown, hazards, hazardous activities, what are there. For example, we have work at height, major work at height activity there, we have uh, flammable activities there, you know that the gas plant, oil and gas industry where we are doing the shutdown, it's full of gases. So gases anytime they can explode. So we have to be careful with all the uh, sparks arising from all our activities. For that purpose, even whatever the hammer even we are using, we are using that of brass hammer to avoid the spark because there should be no spark generated with, uh, through our activity. So with that, with our activity, if there is some spark, if there is a, some source of gas or uh, something like that, it can ignite and uh, you know we are uh, in an area where everywhere it is gas. It is a plant industry, so it can be a very big loss. So there are very high safety rules and procedures getting forward there. Hydrojetting activities are there, work at height activities are there, there are many types of scaffoldings getting used there. For example, few of them cantilever, suspended scaffolding. These are common scaffoldings which are getting used there around the column also at the work at height. There are too much too much height activities out there and uh, all, a, lots of, a lots of weight involved in the lifting activity. For the lifting activity, there is a pre-risk assessment for all the activities as I told you before. For the lifting activity also, there will be a JSA properly made, there will be documentations. The permit system out there will be very good. We have permit system out there, then we will be having attachments to support those uh, attachment documents to support our permit. That will be one JSA job safety analysis there will be risk assessment for that if there is a high risk activity there will be a risk assessment for that but normally with each activity in the shadow you will be having a JSA with so you can know that what are the steps of the activity and how we can control that for example I'll tell you the hazards now I will talk about the hazards for well, there is a lifting activity there is a chance of someone uh, to get inside inside the barrication area anything anytime anything can fall down so for that purpose there will be a barrication, a proper procedure will be followed, signages will be there. For the lifting act activity the proper procedure will be followed, for example there is a confined space activity. For that purpose a proper procedure will be there which we have to follow before the start of the activity and also we have to conduct that activity safely. Now for that purpose confined space activity we have, we have proper trained hole watcher out there, we will do continuous gas monitoring also, we will do the gas testing and then we will uh, provide that uh, there will be a Continuous. If there is a hot work activity, there will be a there will be a continuous fire watcher out there. How watcher will be continuously looking out the man people quiet, uh, working inside. There will be a communication source of communication among them, and then the whole area will be before start of the activity and also after. As per the as per the space condition, will provide ventilation out there. If the ventilation is required, there will be a continuous more ventilation out there uh, to keep the environment safe and the oxygen level. Continuous gas monitoring will be there also because there is a chance of uh, gases to be. There will be a log sheet maintained while entering into the confined space and while coming outside. That will be maintained highly maintained each and every person going inside will sign and keep their card, keep their IDs with the home watcher so that we can keep the record that the how many people are inside in case of emergency we can re react accordingly. Except that we have confined space entry certificate. That certificate will be given after examining the confined space that is it okay for the uh, for the person to go and work inside. That confined space entry certificate is must for any of the confined space to be opened and worked. That will be issued by the client to the contractor company so that they can carry out their activity. Then that confined space entry certificate means that the confined space is safe for the occupancy and this, or it is safe to use. Then we will come back to other activities. We have hydrojetting activities. Hydrojetting have a lot of pressure included in that. That pressure can be between 8000 to 12000 psi. It can be more as per the capacity of the equipment. So that hydrojetting will be carried out and with that hydrojetting there are hazards associated that, that have so much pressure, that water has so much pressure. If, if it will hit you, it will cross you across. You, you can die due to that pressure. There is, uh, we are using, uh, there is a proper safety procedure also for that. We are uh, doing some, uh, uh, why we are using the hydrojetting for the cleaning of the exchangers. What exchanger bundles we are cleaning through that. If there is any blockage or any problem with that, that will be cleared. So we are using one safety device is getting used along with that, uh, which is keeping. For, for example, the hose of that hydrojetting hose which we are using is getting out of the tube on which we are doing the hydrojetting. It will have very extreme pressure while coming outside. It can uh, behave like snake and can hit someone. And that also have too much pressure. If that pressure, with that pressure, if that pipe will hit someone, that definitely have a chance to get that person seriously injured and even that death can be occurred through that also. So for that purpose, there is a safety device also getting used out there, anti-withdrawal device. With the help of that device, when we are getting that pipe out of that uh, tube, so that pipe will not come out completely, it will stay inside and the person outside will be safe. And then the noise is a very big hazard there. 
because there are during the purging time also hydrojetting activity whatever the activity machinery which we, we are using out there is creating a lot of noise and also the environmental uh, things are there for example we, they are doing the purging that all gases are getting outside in the environment the flames flare, flares are there which are burning the gases continuously so whole area it's where very we have to uh, keep ourselves very safe with the help of the pps which we have to use as per our activity and also there are normal pps uh, on the each plant as per their productivity so we have to follow that also so after we have uh, cleared our activities for example we have finished our activities with the help of the equipment as i told you there are hard work activities out there there are confined space entries out there uh, but we are going to do grinding we are going to do we are going to do uh, some work at height activities the crane activities are the major one we'll use forklifters out there so after all these equipments what we are using out there we are we have many hazards out there so we have to be very careful while working in a shut down area after completing all those activities after completing those activities we have to first that uh, we will do the inspection of that equipment our qc department of the contra contractor company will do the inspection of all that area after doing inspection and clearing they will call for the final inspection from the client after the final inspection is done by the client that will be cleared and equipment if it need more working in that or that equipment is completely clear we can close that then they will box up the equipment hydrotype group will be called they will box up that the hydrotype will be done on a specific pressure that bolts will be closed and after that it will be the same process as in the start in the post post shutdown activities will be also the same so what they will do they will do the purging they will same do the purging and then they will uh, cross steam with the pressure and they are in the in these process in the beginning also and in the end there we, there are two also three main active hazards out there cold surfaces hot surfaces and noise because there will be so much noise pressure due to that purging going on steam purging going on and after we have done the box up of the equipment it will be hand over back the company the client company uh, will take that equipment back and they will do the remaining things with that equipment it will be hand over from the contractor company to the client company we will do the dis dismantling of our scaffolding for example we are this contractor company so we will do the dismantling of our uh, equipment so all the equipment will remove our all equipment it will be boxed up and will be hand over to the client area the, all the permits out there will be closed and the same activities as i told you the purging will be out there the purging uh, i told you earlier also there are three hazards involved in that hot surfaces cold surfaces and noise too much noise out there so uh, with that we will close out all the shutdown activities so it's a very important thing few things i want to tell you about the shutdown at the end of this uh, the shutdown activity is a continuous activity like do you don't have gaps breaks in that there even a minute a single minute a single hour is very important for you so you have to keep going with the progress there is a percentage there is a time schedule in which you have to complete the shutdown because the progress uh, the the process is stopped due to that shutdown so that process we have to restart as soon as possible as there is alternate ways the process is going on it's not completely stopped but this is actually the uh, directly the company is getting loss from this that they are not processing through this area also they will increase their production but by doing the shutdown they are increasing the life of their plant by which what can they get the more profit like they don't have to uh, they don't have to face the less production because the efficiency of uh, those equipments will be good after we have done the shutdown so thank you very much for watching our video